Hey guys, welcome back to Gluten-Free Habit. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make my new pizza crust, and I'll use it to make delicious pizza margarita. So a long time ago, I posted my first pizza crust recipe, and I've since made some improvements to it, and I wanted to share it with you. And all I really did was just make a few minor changes to the recipe, and I even made the process a little bit easier, so I think you're gonna like this one. And I love this pizza crust because it's crispy on the bottom, but it's still chewy on the inside like good pizza should be. And I'm gonna use it to make this classic Neapolitan pizza margarita. It's a very simple and delicious pizza, and I hope you love it too, but of course you can use your pizza crust to make any kind of pizza you want. The full recipe can be found down below in the description box. Measuring your flours by weight is always the most accurate, so I'll leave those measurements down below as well. And here are the ingredients you'll need. And as always, make sure your ingredients are gluten-free. You'll need some brown rice flour, white rice flour, potato starch, be careful not to buy potato flour accidentally, that's something different, a little bit of salt, xanthan gum, some garlic powder, instant yeast, and I decided to use instant yeast this time because some of you have asked if instant yeast can be used in some of my recipes, and yes, it definitely can. Baking powder, a little sugar, olive oil, water, some unflavored gelatin, your favorite gluten-free pizza sauce, some fresh mozzarella, grated Parmesan, and some fresh basil leaves. You'll also need a pizza pan or something to bake the pizza on and some parchment paper. Okay, let's start by getting a few things ready. First, cut some parchment paper to the size of your pan. And you wanna wash your basil leaves and pat them dry. I usually use about eight or nine. Three of them I set aside for garnish in the middle and the rest you can just tear in half or leave whole to place around the pizza. I recommend that you just grow your own basil in a little pot. It's way less expensive than buying it in the store all the time and it's really easy to grow. Now let's get started. In a medium mixing bowl, we'll add most of our dry ingredients the brown rice flour, white rice flour, potato starch, salt, baking powder, xanthan gum, garlic powder, sugar, and instant yeast. Now whisk that all together and set it aside. Now you'll wanna get some hot water from the tap and add in your gelatin. Give this a quick stir and help it to dissolve. Gelatin may seem like a strange ingredient for pizza, but it works really well because it helps add structure and it gives the pizza a nice chewy texture. Now to your flour mixture, add your olive oil. And at this point your gelatin will be dissolved, so go ahead and pour that in. It's important that the water is hot because this will activate our yeast. So you don't wanna let the water sit for a while because then it'll cool off too much. And make sure that when you add in your gelatin, you really scrape out your measuring cup because the gelatin will stick to it. Now mix the dough for five minutes. Just start on low speed, then when everything's blended together, you can increase to high. Mixing for the entire time is really important. It really helps the gluten-free flour soak up some of the liquid and it'll make a difference in the texture of your pizza crust. When you're done mixing your dough, it will be sticky and it'll resemble a thick batter rather than a traditional pizza dough. This is how it should look though, so don't panic and don't get tempted to add more flour. Okay, let's spread out the dough. Lay out your parchment on a movable surface like a cutting board and spray it with nonstick spray. Now scoop out the dough. Now 
and then lay onto it another parchment that's also sprayed with nonstick spray. Now using your hands, gently spread out the dough. You don't have to press very hard because the dough is so soft. Your dough should measure about 12 inches in diameter if you're making a round pizza crust. If you don't have it shaped perfectly, don't worry. That can be corrected after you pull off the parchment paper, but do try to make sure that the dough is evenly thick throughout so that it'll bake well. And then when you're done, just carefully peel off the parchment. Now set out a little bowl of water to dip your fingers into, and you can start shaping the edge of the pizza. I like to start by rolling up the edges all the way around the pizza, and then I smooth it out. And please note that this step is entirely optional. If you're really hungry and you don't need your pizza to look perfect, feel free to skip this step. The goal here is to create a thicker outer edge to hold in the sauce and toppings. I would say that this pizza is great for two people, or it could be a very large personal size pizza for a really, really hungry person. Sometimes I make my crust the day before I knead it. You basically complete the recipe up to the point of par baking it, but I'll leave exact directions below for how you can do that. It's super convenient. When you're done shaping your pizza crust, it should measure about 11 inches. I base my cooking time on this 11 inch size, so if you've made an extra thin or extra thick pizza, just adjust your baking time. When you're done shaping, spray some plastic wrap with nonstick spray and gently cover the dough. Now let it sit for 40 minutes in a warm place to rise. While it's rising, you'll need to preheat your oven and your pan. For this first bake, the oven should be set at 400 degrees. I'm using a cast iron pan and I give it at least 20 minutes to heat up, but you may have a different pan and every oven heats differently, so just decide how long yours needs to heat up. When your dough is done rising, you can gently remove the plastic. Now slide the dough onto the heated pan. We'll just be par baking our crust right now and we'll finish baking it after we top it. Bake your pizza crust for just seven minutes and then slide the crust with the parchment onto your cutting board, leaving the pan in the oven. Now increase the temperature of the oven to 450 degrees for the second baking. You can just slide out the parchment and throw that away. You'll notice that your pizza crust is soft and floppy right now, but don't worry, it'll get crispy and firmer after we finish baking it. Now, if you want to, you can brush the edges with the egg mixture to give it a little bit of a shine and to help it turn a nice golden color. This is totally optional though. Okay, let's top the pizza. Of course you can make whatever type of pizza that you want, but I'll show you how to make a pizza margarita. Start with your favorite gluten-free pizza sauce. Then add some grated Parmesan. I admit I'm actually using the canned variety right now, but if you have the time, freshly grated would taste best. I'm using between two and three tablespoons here. The Parmesan cheese adds flavor, but I also add it because the fresh mozzarella that we're using has much less salt in it than the low moisture type that we're all used to buying and shredding at home. So the Parmesan will help compensate for the missing salt. Without it, your pizza will taste a little bit bland. 
Now add your fresh mozzarella. Fresh mozzarella is higher in moisture, so don't load your pizza up with it too much. Otherwise, you'll notice that your pizza will be quite wet on top. Some people even press out some of the moisture with a paper towel before using it on their pizza. I don't find that necessary. I don't put that much cheese on it. But depending on what variety you buy, if it looks super moist, you may need to do that. Now finish off your pizza with a very light drizzle of olive oil and we'll add the basil later so that we don't burn it in the oven. After your pan is heated, slide the pizza onto your pan and hopefully you'll hear a slight sizzle. This is a good sign that your pizza will get slightly crispy on the bottom. Bake your pizza in your 450 degree oven for roughly five more minutes or until the edges are golden and the cheese is fully melted. But every oven is different, so please watch it carefully. A couple minutes before the pizza is done, add on your basil. An important part of making a really great pizza crust is having a hot enough pan or pizza stone. The pan I use is cast iron. I love this pan because I can heat it to a high temperature and it really holds the heat. It's also naturally non-stick. When the baking's done, remove it from the oven and immediately transfer it off the baking pan. Don't leave your pizza on the hot pan because it'll continue to bake and it will quickly become overbaked. I like to garnish my pizza margarita with three basil leaves right in the center. Now slice and enjoy. And there you go, delicious gluten-free pizza margarita. If you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and press the thumbs up down below. And I always love hearing from you guys, so feel free to leave me a comment and let me know what you think about the pizza crust, tell me your recipe requests, or just say hi. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next gluten-free habit recipe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.